Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a very nice watch. You can see a Rolex, a Datejust with uh, steel and gold. Uh, the watch is in good condition and actually that's a watch from uh, from a follower. He sent me this watch uh, to do a, a service on it and uh, there is a couple of issues that he want me to address so we see a bit in this video uh, what we can do about this. First, let's check if the watch is working. I'm winding the watch here and uh, obviously uh, it's a Rolex, it's a screwed on crown and you see the mark there as well on the dial. That's something that he wants me to fix and see if we can, uh, what, what we can do about it. Uh, let's check changing the time and see if the date is uh, jumping around midnight. It's coming close there. Oh yeah, around 10 minutes which is quite a lot actually and especially for, for Rolex. I think Rolex is uh, plus or minus three or two minutes. Uh, they want the day to jump so that's quite uh, earlier on if you want. So we see if we can change that. that we have a, a quick side date as well. You see like you have a, an intermediate position with the crown where you can change the date very quickly and uh, trying to screw down the crown back. There we go. Actually this is quite a nice watch like with this uh, gold bezel and uh, gold crown. So this is my website. Um, yeah, I created a website where I can I sell some of the watches that I maintain online. Obviously, that the one I'm currently doing is from a, from a follower, so obviously it's not for sale. Um, as well, you can go there and if you want to have your watch uh, serviced or restored, you can send it to me and we can have a chat about whatever you what what you want on a watch and what you want to do. So you just can go on there on the website. I will put a, a link down below in the description. Okay, so let's go back to the watch. We are going to remove this uh, beautiful uh, bracelet. So it's a Jubilee bracelet with like uh, gold in the middle. And uh, that's quite handy. You see you have some hole there where you can uh, press the springs out, which make it very easy to, to remove. And as well, quite safe because you don't scratch the... And look at the dirt that there is there underneath. So we put that in a ultrasonic machine a bit later on. And like I said, it's quite safe because you don't scratch uh, the case by removing this uh, spring bar. Okay, so now I'm using my uh, special tool, my custom-made tool from Orotech to open the, the case back. I will put a, a link down below as well if you want to buy one of these custom tools. They are pretty cool and they are very, very nice. I had a Chinese copy like uh, from version and these tools are much, much better to open, uh, to open or close a watch. So I will recommend and I will put a tool down below. You will see like you have a lot of tools which are customized from Eurotech and they are pretty funky. Yeah? Okay, here we open the watch and you can see the beautiful caliber automatic. You see the rotor on the top and you see the balance spinning there nicely. And uh, first we see the first issue we're going to check and look at the amount of play that there is on the rotor there. Okay, we'll have to address that. That's not good because obviously the rotor will touch uh, other part of the mechanism and where and does it will not do this job uh, very good as well if you have this amount of play so we will need to address this issue. You can see there as well it's a calibre 3035 from Rolex which was used like in a lot of watches like uh, obviously uh, in this uh, Datejust but is well as well used like in uh, Submariners so a very very nice and robust as well. Uh, caliber from Rolex. Just aligning the hand there, just to remove them with my Presto tool. Just reading the dial fee screw. And we can take this dial. You see the mark on the dial there? And actually it looks like the paint or if you want the lacquer which is on top of the dial, it looks like it's, uh, it's gone. So I think it would be difficult to remove this. Uh, it's just not a, a stain, so it's, it's a bit more than that. I don't know it went, maybe some uh, some rust or some humidity did this. Uh, that's why as well you will see later on in this in this service it's very important that you change all the rings and seal on the watch because you don't want humidity even if it's not a diver watch but it's still a Rolex, yeah? So you have a, a screw down crown and uh, it should be well protected against humidity and that's why you want to have your watch maintained as well once in a while just to make sure it's uh, as what a tad as it can because yeah, you don't want to have a beautiful dial or a beautiful me mechanism like this one to be damaged. So I'm disassembling the date mechanism and you can see this little jewel there. It shows that uh, it's a pretty unique way to do a, a calendar mechanism 
normally it's like yeah it's like much more simple and without jewels because obviously jewels are expensive and um, that's why most of the time like when you see uh, a watch with a uh, high number of jewels I think this one is 27 which is quite high um, yeah that's that's a testament to the quality of uh, of the mechanism okay removing there is a automatic system you see it's like one system that on the top of the watch and basically the rest of the mechanism now is like if we have a manual watch it will, it will, it will work perfectly and you will have the automatic system that come on top just to reload the the mainspring when you when your wrist is moving or when you are moving around removing the power there from the mainspring and you see the mechanism is quite nice actually look at the different finish you have a nice perlage you see like you have this uh, kind of snailing on top uh, of this uh, of these parts again you see there on the, on the palette fork bridge like this kind of sunburst finish on top oh, it was still a bit of power you see like the wheels turning and look at the perlage that you have everywhere like different sizes as well of perlage different sizes of uh, round you have a bigger one smaller one it's quite nice, yeah? I mean, okay, it's not the same level of finish that you can maybe find on other watches, but it's not bad, yeah? And a lot of people, uh, like, uh, criticize Rolex, like, for their movement being basics, and uh, I, I don't agree, yeah? It's like, first, the movements are very robust. You see, like, a lot of jewels everywhere. It's uh, very solid. That's why the reputation of Rolex is coming from uh, from there. And and the decoration is, is not bad, yeah, for a modern watch. Um, obviously, like you saw on the channel, like especially like watches from Geiger, Movado, other brands like this, Universal Genève, uh, which uh, yes, uh, they're not around anymore. That's a shame. But they were decorating their movement very nicely. But uh, in modern in modern days, like where obviously cost and um, yeah, maybe like profitability is uh, something very important. Like obviously, like the decoration is like a bit less. Um, and on a Rolex, like I think, like now there is a new uh, Daytona who just came out, which has a, uh, a case back where you can see through. But most of the Rolex, you don't see the mechanism anyway. Only the only the watchmaker uh, will, will see the mechanism. So you can argue what the point of decorating a, a, a mechanism that you will not see. Yeah? But um, yeah, I think it's, it's it's quite nice to have. Uh, it's, it show as well the level of. Uh, of skills that you have uh, from the factory and and the Rolex one, to be fair, they're not they're not bad. They're not bad. Look at the finish as well on this on this piece here, yeah? and I love the gold parts and uh, the snailing on tops. So like uh, uh, it's it's very nice. Okay, I remove the last bridge on this side, which has this little wheel underneath center wheel there. And we move back to the calendar and finishing to disassemble the rest of the calendar piece and, uh, and the keyless work. Oh, this is uh, for the quick set date. That's a wheel that's used to change uh, the date quickly when you are in an intermediate position with your with your crown. And here, here we go. Now we have a keyless work, which is pretty standard. We're removing the wheel. You see you have the yoke there, the yoke spring. And you see this gold part underneath which is a hack actually, which is when you pull and to set the time, the second will stop and actually will come in contact with the balance wheel just to, to stop it. That's this part I'm talking about. And that is the last few parts with this crown and gold crown and the clutch and the waning pinion. That's it. We can clean the pivot with a bit of uh, peg wood there just to remove the, if there is some dried oil or grease inside there, just to make sure we get clean easily when we put it in a in a machine, in a washing machine. And we just place back the balance, beautiful balance. Just to make sure it's safe during cleaning. There we go. And just secure it with the screw there. We are going to remove the jewels just to clean them uh, again individually in the, in the machine, in the washing machine, just to make sure the oil and uh, which is inside there is is removed. So I'm just releasing the spring on the top, 
which has these two little arms there. And now I can grab the jewel. Do the same thing on the other side. Just releasing the spring. Which is obviously the shock protection for the balance staff of the balance assembly. And now we're going to disassemble. You remember I just removed it like the, the assembly of for the winding system. I just removed the C-clips. So I, now I can detach the rotor on side. And we see we need to remember we need to address the issue with the rotor being some play. We do that at the end before we put it back on the watch. Removing this screw there. And you can see there are 27 joules. It's written there on the, on top of the bridge. So that's quite a high count of joules, like I said. It's, uh, and you see there, even on automatic system, you have joules everywhere. Each wheel has a, has a joule. There we go, it's fully disassembled. Now going to do the same with the barrel assembly. Just taking everything out, taking the mainspring inside and the barrel arbor, just to make sure everything is clean. I'm just going to put, like I like to do on Rolex, I like to put uh, a new mainspring anyway. Um, because they are not so expensive and you want to have, like if you have a Rolex, you want to have it to run it like uh, nicely. So, and yes, there is plenty of uh, mainspring available for this movement. So uh, it's better to put a new one. Okay, so we're going to put all the parts in tiny baskets and everything is going to go into the cleaning machine. I see all the parts from this uh, mechanism, which is, yeah, quite a lot of parts because you have automatic and a date function on it, a complication, so there is few extra extra parts. There we go, that's ready to go in a cleaning machine. So the cleaning will be done in few stages. First we'll have a cleaning stage, two wrenching, and the last one we dry the parts. And I would like to use the opportunity during the cleaning to uh, thanks my patron. So I have a patron page. I have put the link down below in the description. So if you want to go there and support the channel, that would be really, really appreciated because it takes me a lot of time and effort to put this uh, video. So I would like to thank my existing patron. So David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corny, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And uh, I would never imagine I would have so many people supporting me. So if you want to go there and join the clan, you can go and uh, on the link down below for my Patreon page and join one of the group uh, to support the channel. Okay, it's now clean and dry. And as well, if you did not subscribe to the channel, I will uh, encourage you to subscribe because I try to put like a video once every uh, week or every two weeks. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, click on the like button, bell icon, it will help uh, for the video to be uh, pushed down on the internet and find other uh, watch clover uh, liking this video so yeah click on the like button on the bell and uh, subscribe you will get notification when i put a new video online okay i treated a few parts in epilam just removing the pilam there from the pivot point oiling the jewels that go on the balance assembly see it dropping a drop of 90 10 there right in the middle and I will place back the jewels that just been oiled on the balance. Closing the spring, obviously. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. And just closing the spring and we'll check if the the balance I like to do before I start the assembly and removing the balance from the mechanism just with a little bit puff of air, just to make it turn and see if the if it's turning good and if there is no friction and if it's a hairspring as well, is uh, doing what it's supposed to do, like lay down flat and uh, with nice circumcentric and it looks good, yeah. Just oiling there a jewels, which is for the, for the escape wheel with my automatic oiler, because again, like it was some jewels that I clean uh, uh, yes, you have some uh, uh, shock uh, spring as well on the, on the jewels for the for the escape wheel. So I just clean them and lubricate them with this automatic oiler. And now we're gonna start a reassembly as well of the mechanism. So basically, starting by the reverse order as what we have done during the disassembly. 
And what's important and what's why it's very important to service your watch is that you're going to put, we remove the oil, oil and grease by cleaning the parts. And now we're going to put new ones just to make sure the parts are nicely lubricated and running together very, very nicely without too much friction and without wear as well, because that's the, pur the purpose of uh, the oil, just to make sure as well, the parts which are in contact metal to metal, they don't wear. Uh, too quick and if they wear obviously you need to change them at one point and especially on this movement like uh, Rolex movement like the parts can be very 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 expensive just to give you an idea so I think like on another movement I uh, one of the screw was broken and like a screw was like this type of screw it was like 20 euro for a screw yeah uh, I think like you see the for example the the balance wheels with the air springs they will be like 400 600 euro depending on the model even more just for a balance wheel so it can be it can be very very expensive on his movement so that's why it's very it's better that you uh, maintain them regularly so to avoid parts uh, getting damaged with wear okay so carry on the assembly by putting like we put the train of wheel we put the, the barrel assembly and now we put the barrel bridge on top again you see me oiling and greasing all the different points which are important. Putting the click spring there. And I'm putting the click. Just, here we go, nicely in place, like where you have the spring and we're gonna secure it with the screws that come on top. You're gonna place the ratchet wheel there, which is beautiful, like with this gold color. And you see, it comes again the click there, and the click does its job, stopping the stopping the wheel in one direction. So when you wind the watch, it will turn, but it doesn't turn the opposite way. So that, that the the mainspring doesn't unwind. That's the purpose of the click. And you're gonna put the crown wheel, and you can see there as well. You will see a bit of a difference. That's uh, yeah, it's quite, it's on, on Rolex, you will see like this part here, like this intermediate wheel between the crown and the ratchet wheels to transmit the power basically between the crown wheel and uh, to the ratchet wheel. It's a bit different. You see this wheel, which is moving like uh, you have like uh, a hole that can go sideways. So basically when you, when you wind the watch, you will come in contact with the, and wind the, the ratchet wheel. But when it doesn't, up oh, it come off the ratchet wheel. That's a nice, uh, nice, that's a nice design. Okay, we move to the dial side now and going to reassemble the keyless work. And you see me putting some blue grease there on all these parts that see a lot of friction. So we move to something with a higher viscosity there. We move to a grease and not an oil anymore. The hack. Remember, because you go at the bottom there, you, so you need to make sure you don't forget about it. Get stuck to my tweezers there. There we go. Carry on doing the assembly with the setting lever, which is connected to the hack. You see when you move. And here we have the setting lever spring that come on top and get secured by this little screw. So what I like to do, you see, like I'm assembling uh, all the parts for the mechanism. And uh, the purpose will be to see if the mechanism is running good. And if it's running, actually, yeah, if it's uh, if it's starting. And when it's starting after and when it works, I know it works. I will uh, start to assemble the complication, which is in this case of the of this watch, this uh, particular model. It's a calendar function, because, which is uh, an extra complication. And the automatic uh, automatic system. Um, so that's what I will do last, basically. First, I want to have the the core, if you want, of the movement, which is like the train of wheels, the ball, the keyless work. After, we're going to put the pallet fork, and uh, and uh, and obviously, we're going to put last um, the, the, the balance wheel. And the movement should run. And when it's after when it's running, and we know it's run good, we'll, we'll carry on doing the rest of uh, doing the rest of the watch. Just checking the keyless work there. Yeah, looks good. Both position. Now I'm going to oil 
all the pivot points from the train of wheel. Very important, you see. All this ruby there need to be oiled. And when it's done, I can carry on with the assembly by putting the pallet fork in place, the pallet fork bridge, and we are getting closer to the moment of truth, which is like putting the balance wheel and see if the movement went to start again. Okay, securing now the bridge in place and I'm going to oil, I'm always oiling the, the pallet fork but I always do it off camera because it's quite tricky to, to capture it on camera and you see see the pallet fork clicking there left and right so it means the power is coming so that's good and let's see if the balance, we're going to put the balance in place the jewels are already oiled, you remember we just uh, done it at the beginning just after cleaning and yes, perfect we have a runner and it's beating, it looks like the, it's beating quite good. So we put it on a time grapher at the end, see which kind of result we are getting. And so now, like I said, that now the, the basic of uh, the movement, if you want, is assembled. So we're going to start with the complication, starting with the calendar. So this is a date jumper, if you want, with this huge spring and this jewel there, which is really small, and you don't want to lose this jewel because you will take forever to find it. Just putting a bit of oil there on the spring. Putting the hour wheel, which is driving this uh, calendar wheel as well. And you see, I need to move, and the jewels will come underneath this wheel to rest again against the part. And this mechanism actually is to have uh, a date that jump uh, suddenly. You know, you don't uh, a date because you will see some, uh, especially on older watches. Like you see the date that start changing, changing, changing. You see it move it in the window, and up it jump. But uh, on this movement, like you will not see it coming. You will jump straight away from one day to the other without seeing the, the date moving, which is quite nice. It's, uh, it's much nicer because on some other watches, like you see when you will be around 11 p.m., like you will start to see the windows, the, the date in the windows moving. But with these watches, you will not see it. With this mechanism, this type of uh, date jump is very sudden. You will not see it. Okay, we put the uh, date ring back on the movement. Just need to make sure it goes under the part there. Yeah, here we go. And again, the jewel. Just harming there. That's the spring, like uh, the jump for the for the date. And we have this little screw that I come and secure the, just to make sure the date, this doesn't move. Let's check the quick side date. Yeah, it works. You see this wheel turning. And now if we change the time, we will see the jump, it will come very sudden. It's loading, it's loading, tac, it jumped. Yeah, it's working, perfect. Okay, so now let's go focus on the case. Um, the owner actually didn't want me to polish uh, the case, which I think is, is a good and uh, good idea. And he just wanted me to, to polish a crystal, which is, yeah, a bit scratch. Uh, it's an acrylic crystal, actually, it's not uh, a, a mineral or sapphire crystal. Uh, so obviously it can scratch pretty easily, but it's as well pretty easy to to polish. But and look underneath, like it's rust or I don't know. It's like kind of so we'll have to clean all of that because of, obviously this is not good for like the uh, sealing power of the watch. So I'm just going to rub it with like a piece of peg wood first, and after we put it in in a, in an ultrasonic machine. And again, there you see on on the gold side, like okay, it's, it come off pretty easy, but yeah, okay, we put that into the ultrasonic, removing the old O-rings that we'll have to replace as well. And I go on my polishing machine just to polish the crystal, like I said, just to give it a, a, new, a new look, a new shine on the watch. Okay, look, I cleaned the dial, but you see the mark, it went away a bit, but it's still there. And actually the owner told me, yeah, I don't want this. I want I want a new dial. Uh, so he bought a new dial himself and he sent it to me. And this is a new one, which is actually quite nice. I, I like the color and I, I think it suits the watch a lot better with the with the gold. So you see that's the old one. I'm gonna obviously send it back to him. And I put a new one. And you see the new one as well. There is a mark at the top, but it's a lot less. And uh, you probably will not see it when it's in the case. 
And I love this color, like uh, it's more gold tone to, to the other one, which was a bit more silver. Beautiful. Okay, so let's make the day jump. And uh, there we go. And when it's jumping, it means it's midnight. So I can set my hour hand to midnight. And you remember when the, the, the watch came, the, the date was jumping around 10 minutes before. And this is why when you set the hand, you don't set them correctly uh, at midnight. And my goal is to have it like plus or minus five minutes maximum. Uh, I like to have the, the day jump five minutes before, or five minutes after midnight at the, at, the, at the worst point. So now I'm putting the minute in. Just press it in place there with my, with my tool. Let's check what's the date jumping at. Oh yeah, it's just like we have four, three minutes, three minutes before midnight. That's perfect. Putting the second end now in place. Good, so we can focus on the case, and you see the case? Look, the rust is gone. We're gonna put and the brand new crystal, and I put the crown in place just to make sure I align the cyclop. You see, that's easier to align. And uh, putting the bezel back on, and I will just use my press there just to press the bezel, and that's what's keeping as well the crystal in place. So I just use a special insert with like a plastic inside just to press the bezel. Just make sure it doesn't get damaged because this gold is very soft. And this is all the new O-rings and seals that I'm going to put in the, on the watch. So I'm just going to first put a bit of Molycote there just to make sure it uh, helps get even better with uh, water tightness with a bit of, uh, of grease. So I put this big seal there first on the, on the case back that we'll install later obviously when we close the watch. We go, and we have another little seal that need to go inside the crown on this model. So I remove the old one, and I put the new one at the bottom of the crown. And when you will screw the crown, it will come and compress again the tube, and that's what make it uh, seal. And there is an O-ring inside the tube. There we go. You see it in there. I just put a, the new one. Perfect. We can place back the case and you see with this beautifully uh, clean uh, crystal now which is fully polished place back the screw there that uh, keeps the movement in place sure I did not have to remove them I could have kept them on the, on the on the movement and the way you do it on the Rolex you see you make it rotate the screws go underneath and actually you need to unscrew them and they will come against the case and uh, the movement will stay like this in position. So now I'm putting the crown. There we go. And now I will be able to unscrew basically these screws that come against the case. Perfect. Now I'm going to change, remember, the play in, uh, in this uh, oscillating weight for the for the for the automatic system. So I'm just punching out the old one. Now I'm making it flat, the new one with a, a flat punch. And I'm just going to reinstall. That's a, a brand new a shaft if you want with a special tool. Now I'm going to creep it in place by hammering quite hard, but that's the way it's done. I'm just putting the new shaft. There we go. It's in place, it's turning. And now I can reassemble the automatic system, the automatic so sub assembly with this uh, reversing wheel there that need to be oiled. Placing the wheel there, that's not that's not easy actually to pull this one, but yeah, here we go. I managed to find a way to do it. But now I just need to place these two reversing wheel and we can put later the bridge that go on top and we'll align all these pivot points like in the jewels that you can see there. Perfect. I have three screws, like three little screws that keep this bridge in place. So we just need to screw that and we should be able to put back the new, uh, newly refurbished, like you see, oscillating weight. There we go. 
so the weight actually you have to pull it before because it's uh, kept in place underneath the the system with a, with a C clip. So you see I'm holding there the jewels and this is a C clip there that keeps the the weight in in position. Just press it there. And you have this part that come and connect to the rest of the mechanism to transmit the power when you when the weight is turning. And now I can place it back on top of the mechanism. Just make sure it's aligned. With the screw there. There we go, perfect. Just put like the screws and there is no more place now in uh, in the in the rotor, which is what you want. And it's turning, you see both direction, one direction, and you can see the crown moving underneath like there. Yeah, you see all the parts are moving, perfect. So we can close the watch. Obviously I just see the watch as well, just to make sure it run and we see how, how, how well it run on a time graph a bit later on. And I use my tool as well to, to close it safely with the right amount of torque on the watch, use a new seal, putting back the beautiful bracelet that was clean as well in your ultrasonic machine. So give it a bit of uh, of uh, extra shine on the on the, on the bracelet, even even if uh, I did not do a polish because yeah, I think it was it was fine. And look at the watch how it's run on a time grapher with an amplitude around 290 degree, a bit error of zero, and it's right around zero uh, for the for, for the rate, plus, plus two seconds, minus one second, zero. So the watch is running perfectly. And uh, I hope the owner of this watch and uh, my follower will be happy and will wear this beautiful piece. Look, how, look at it, it's a beautiful uh, Rolex, steel and gold, a day just. So I hope you like this restoration and I see you next time for my next project. Bye bye.